Hey everybody and welcome to the Final Fantasy Tactics Coliseum AI Tournament League for June. Being the short month that it is, we have six matches tonight. <sighs> I'm Sardak and with me tonight is Sol. Good evening everyone. Up first we have Love Card Magic 2 versus Omega Suspect 2. No Originality versus Squishy Squad. For No Originality, we have Butts the Lancer with Double Punch, Meat Bone Slash, and Basic Skill. Ferris the Monk with Time Magic HP Restore and Equip Armor. <sighs> Kara the Ninja with Double Nagra Rock, Item MP Switch, and Equip Sword. That is some real big throws. And Lena the Oracle with White Magic, Weapon Guard, and Defense Up. On the other side, for the Squishy Squad, we have Tywer the Ninja, Item Weapon Guard, Throw Item, Peyton the Geomancer with Talk Skill, HP Restore, and Magic Attack Up. 20 MA and Magic Attack Up, those are going to be some devastating talk skills. Oakwe the Geomancer with Basic Skill, Dragon Spirit, and Overflow. And River the Archer with Basic Skill, uh, No Reaction, and Deadshot. Yes, we already have a weapon guard on the ninja. Red shoes and a long bow. Let's go to large 80 and see how that goes. Does that archer actually have any skills learned out of curiosity? Uh, don't know. I because when I load up the team in the uh, team loader, it just has nothing picked for the secondary. That's why I'm a little confused. Uh, don't know if maybe that got updated since the teams went out. So, the team builder puts basic skill as a secondary if you don't put a secondary on at, at the yeah. memgen phase, because if you don't assign a secondary, the AI will think you don't know any abilities, and it will do... Yeah, that's why I was actually questioning, is if the archer actually had anything, because... They don't have anything checked in the builder, so not sure if this is just a pure offense dead shot archer, which is very likely with. Well, it's shot. red shoes, so. Oh, and he's berserk, berserk. I missed that entirely somehow. Running a double geo strap, one of them with uh, as a top skill, and oh, devastating double sleep lands out the gate. Oh, me. Wakes one up and uh, regrets it. Instant regret. Magic Shuriken from downtown, because that ninja just... T what? 10 move, 14 speed? Just throw it from across the map. Long-range throw from the other side, too. Wow, that that was a hit. What percent was that? Did I see that right? Uh, I missed it, so... Berserkers don't care about the uh, near fatal. Still gonna keep fighting. They do care about being dead, though, so at least there's that. Yeah, unfortunately for him, being dead kind of creates a problem. That set a zero percent, actually. Well, that was because sure. it was centered on the the dead unit. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. And don't act in reply, telling her uh, just shut up. We don't want to hear it anymore. 
shuriken from point blank. Pretty quick win for no originality. Go to small 104. Yeah, 84 is a really, really good hit rate for talk skill. Very much. And yeah, I think these teams are probably fairly evenly matched. So a few, a couple good rolls could swing this either way very quickly. Throw back of her own, but gets guarded. And guards the punch. That's weapon guard with a short edge for you. And then dodges. This ninja is just being the dodge tank of the century. And the beautiful arc over the bed. Down goes the thief. That, I mean, uh, the female ninja. This is, uh, this is looking rough for no originality. Squishy squad looking to even it up. Well, but just barely not enough. Full life, the thrower is back up. And then MP switch MP keeps her ready. Solid spin fist on two to try and start the pressure on that archer who swiftly goes down. Archer's not exactly known for their durability. And then the female ninja's persuaded to uh, just stay where she is for a while. And the archer's back up, doesn't care that he's near fatal. Although that oracle sure did. For sure. Secret Fist is going to give free reign to that Geo for a couple of turns. Just not sure which of the two Geos that is. I suppose we'll find out in a moment. Ah, it's the uh, Overflow Geo. Who immediately just puts her down. Uh, looking like this is going to go Squishy Squad's way, considering that it's uh, four on one. Four on if zero, that, practically. Two two four, yeah, practically. If that Lancer can get up, it may be at least an action, but I uh, don't think he's going to make it in time. Yeah, assuredly not. We're going to a game three. Got it all tied up. graveyard this does i feel like kind of favors squishy squad a little bit with the uh, archer being able to make use of the higher ground that they start on it's not high enough to get more but, than like half a tile distance yeah it's not you know a huge amount but it's at least good for him to have started up there He does have five jump, but I'm not sure of anything high enough he can make use of here. Well, wasn't far enough for that one. Persuades her to stop. 87%. Doesn't get a second form of persuasion through Hell Ivy, though. Just gets some damage. Oof, Instant revenge. Don't, don't act, though. That's devastating. Squishy Squad is true to their name, Squishy. Uh, they better hope they can run fast. She didn't run fast enough. <laughs> Fortunately, the tree was uh, was there to tank the second hit. Good old dependable trees, known for their tanking abilities. Thankfully, this one didn't know how to damage split. 
that poor archer if it did. Guards the sleep, but one sleep lands as soon as she's gotten up. Uh, things are looking real rough for Squishy Squad. It's a Berserk Archer against the world and the enemy team currently. He hits the enemy team! Definitely a hard hitter. Don't... But there's revives yeah, on the other seem, side, uh... so... Yeah. There's a revive on the other side, and I just don't think he has the ability to take down multiple is the problem. He did take the right first target, though. Taking the undead is a big deal. Because they can't bring yeah, can't him back him up. up. That ninja can throw from just as far as that archer can shoot. Oof. Gets a crit, but... Well, he's dead shot, I think, so... Yep. The crit's just not quite enough. Yeah, I ordered one this morning, Void, but it'll take a couple days to get here. Anyways, Hopefully no originality takes it 2-1. We go down to Paffy versus Jorably One, down to Clown back in town versus Nordstrom, a gift for the sun. All right, down to Clown, we have Clown the Time Mage with Time Magic, Summon Magic, Dragon Spirit, and Equip Shield. Ringmaster the Arebo with Please Eat. Juggler the Ninja with Item, Catch, and Throw Item. <sighs> and Strongman the Ninja with Punch Art, Weapon Guard, and Equip Armor. Unfortunately, the Short Edge is second, so not getting the Weapon Guard from the Short Edge, only the 20% from the Sasuke Knife. Which is unfortunate. Red Shoes and Barbuda to to start off. They do have the Time Mage to answer the Barbuda. On the other side, for Ajorably, we have Aegir the Chemist with Black Magic MA Save and Magic Attack Up. Balder the Geomancer with Punch Art Hamido and Attack Up. Frigga the Lancer with Basic Skill Damage Split and Defense Up. And Snack for Thor the Porky with Oink. Uh, you are correct, Omega. Weapon Guard only uses the right-hand weapon. I believe that's from vanilla behavior as well. We have the clowns on the left and Nordstrom on the right. Sadly, it looks like the Venetian shield on Nordstrom is not going to do much in this matchup. Looking at the two teams, really only affects Remu and maybe a ball thrown, but I imagine the ninjas, the ninja will preference shirt and considering. Probably when given the option and not having something to exploit shurikens, what they choose. Magic shuriken, typically. I'm guessing that's probably a cyclone or a blizzard, but he doesn't get a chance to tell me which one before he gets taken down. Here comes the Ramu, and there goes the pig. Gonna 
Earth Slash on the ninja, the ninja manages to evade it and counters the, uh... Well, it doesn't counter, but it comes back up with his own Ambrosia to hurt the undead Geo. Oh, Berserk Ninja gets Amidoed, though. Although, I believe the Time Mage is charging... Yep. And that should do it, uh, but... A little bit of friendly fire there. Yeah, Ninja would have survived that if it had not gotten the Hamido. It's okay. She was playing to her role. She is a clown. Which is kind of like a mime, but, you know. It might actually heal MP, Baron. I think Undead Reversal only reverses the, uh the HP damage section to HP healing. I'm not... Yeah, I'm not sure how Undead works with uh, the MP healing of Ambrosia. I do know that it I don't wouldn't know if it display... heals it or does yeah. nothing. I know it wouldn't display the healed mana based on the way the uh, display code works. So, probably heals it, but just doesn't show it, if I had to guess. Interesting. I don't know if that's ever actually swung anything. Pretty it sure it hasn't. Clowns look like they uh, have a pretty commanding lead at the moment, though. Though Strongman's gonna have some trouble with that Lancer. Yeah, but it's not just Strongman, so... The rest of the team backing it up. I don't think this chemist is even going to get turned before Pigu says, take a nap. And indeed. He's just doing his level best, but really needs the rest of the team to come in. Defense up a scutcheon two, so the constant defend with the defense up. Yeah, no, you're not getting through that lancer physically. And damage splits just gonna make it take forever if you do deal damage. I say that, but Pig put in a noble 99 damage there, and Strongman comes to finish it. I'll check the actual code uh, in the morning, Omega. We'll know for sure then. Clowns have taken the first round. Let's see if Nordstrom can bring it back for the second. I know exactly where to look for it, so... It should be at least really easy for me to see. Shark in the open button misses. Then we have a please eat. It is the ninja hungry? He is. Clown moving up and uh, casting on, I assume, the pig, but... It's gonna get spin fisted and put right down. Juggler looking to throw the shuriken and put the chemist down, which he does. Pig brings him right back up, but this is the nerfed oink, so only just enough to make sure the chemist isn't in critical. Juggler's still just taking pot shots and putting people down. Good lord, just constant pain from him. Point to bring the chemist back up, but if I had to guess, he probably just missed his turn. And even if he didn't, he got put right back down.
Is that why he's so fast, Potterness? Just constantly hyped up on Fago? That would make sense. Well, maybe if that clown had some Fago, she'd uh, still be up. Pig's caught in a loop. It's uh, really up to the strongman to break something here for their team. I think they're going to get caught in a loop, too, that's slowly going to whittle them down. Yep, here it comes, and pop. And so the pig give. And this time it's the juggler that takes away. We are about to see that undead Geo get up though, so maybe that'll swing something. Please eat on the Berserk Ninja. Who just does a full lap around the Lancer for style. Lancer takes out the Time Mage. That's leaving us uh, 3 to 3, if I'm seeing correctly. Uh, you are. Uh, it's currently. Well, two, because the chemist went down while I yeah. was talking, but... Yeah. He's been caught in the res loop, and so is the, uh, time mage, but... That Geo should get up here someday. The question is, will it be before the, uh, Lancer goes down? Oh, the chemist actually gets a turn! Goes for offense! And does move out of range of the Rebo! So this spell will go off, but uh, I think it's just going to kill the unit that's not been allowed to have a turn for like 10 turns anyways. The pig actually moved into it to get that kill. Oh, and the shuriken throw misses. Any day now, Geomancer, that you want to take a part in this fight again. I know we've had to miss quite a few res chances already. Piggy is down. Boulder finally stands up. Looks like we're having teams separate a little bit. If they're trying to uh, get team members back up into the fight. Chemist was the other member of the Geo's team, right? Correct. Geo goes back down, Lancer goes back down, the Chemist is... gonna move and do nothing. Yep. Probably wasn't in range to do much. Probably just out of range to cast a spell. Time Mage goes for a spell cast on two. I imagine that's a haste and she just doesn't care about the Lancer. No, it was removed. Never mind. That would explain it. And down goes a pig and a lancer. It is four on one. He goes for the spell cast, but, uh, sorry, friend. Churikin said no. The clowns take it 2 0. Seems that Nordstrom will uh, have to take their gift for their son and take it back to town. Well, maybe Nordstrom, a knight to remember, will have a better shot versus a butcher and the well-done buffet. Ajorably 2 versus Aura of the Dawn 1. Alright, for a knight to remember... We have Thor the Geomancer with Draw Out, Hamido, and Two Swords. 
Hod the Wizard with Time Magic Catch and Magic Attack Up. Loki the Summoner with Planar Magic Auto Potion and Defense Up. And Hell the Priest with White Magic, Yin Yang Magic, Weapon Guard, and Short Charge. On the other side, for the Butcher, we have Soylent the Archer with Lava Bolt and the Strength and Fire Shield plus, or uh, mantle, mantle, with uh, Defend Shield, Item CT Save and Equip Armor, Bloodstalker, Taiju, and King Behemoth. Really, two things I want to comment on. One, I love the archer's name. Uh, being the only human there, all of them named after me, and the archer is Soylent. Yep. <laughs> um, also, I am disappointed that we have Yin Yang magic and the most I'm going to kill a faith unit unit possible almost in Thor, but the Yin Yang doesn't have Prey Faith. Though I don't know if the AI would ever actually cast it on an enemy, sadly. I have no idea. Would be interesting. Maybe something for the future with the AI setups we'll be able to do. Perhaps. We will have to see how that shakes out. Yeah, there's just so many different variables in play there. Early haste two, hits two. Thor and Hod gonna go in fast as they can on this Bloodstalker. If they can burn the Bloodstalker down fast, it would be solid. And they are uh, chain lightning. Oh no, not a chain lightning. Could be me on there. Looking like. A... Uh no, that was an AOE cyclone or blizzard. Ah, blizzard it is. There it is. And it was fast enough, and down goes the Bloodstalker before he can ever actually make use of being low health. Well, 240 damage on a unit with Defend is pretty solid. 180 back's enough to put Thor down, though. Don't act on two. This is, uh... Nordstrom 2 is looking really strong this round. Well, killed her own teammate, but, uh, to be honest, I don't think it'll matter. Well, maybe not. Uh, it's down to a summoner. This turned around real fast. But a fairy brings it brings two back up as the don't act wears off. Hod looking to haste, but don't think he's gonna get it. As Hod was pointing out, God of Ice, well Fire Crossbow will make sure that doesn't isn't a problem. Here comes the life break! And it misses. Life retained. We see a crystal. One of the many benefits of two swords is how it interacts with damage split there. Front and staff box to take away the MP from the behemoth. Uh, probably not her wisest moment. Then again, it's Loki, so... Eh, that's pretty on-brand from Loki. Four choices. Stasis Sword takes out the Behemoth. It is down to a tree in Thor. Oh, unless Hell gets back up! And with the full life right on the back of it, that's gonna shift the numbers a lot. Takes his sword on the tree. No stop proc, but I think, yep, Thor goes down to his own might. Nothing new there. This tree putting in work. The undead's back down, but the summoner fairy. is doing another fairy. 
Yep, there's a fairy to pick up Thor. Let's see if he gets a turn at least. Wizard crystallizes. Thor gets the turn, gets two swings, and puts the tree down. Game one goes to Nordstrom. We'll say the Butcher and his well-done buffet put up a hell of a fight for how bad that started. I do love those matches where it goes back and forth like that. I'm really curious how the pub's gonna go. Uh, historically, from what I've noticed, most matches end pretty swiftly here, one way or the other. That is often the case, yes. Although we have seen a couple go super long here. Oof! An immediate crit puts Thor down. Definitely a departure from the expected. For sure. You'd think the Norseman would uh, be able to take a hit or two, but uh, it, was, it wasn't even one. Olmagus coming out. Does he even have any damage? He does not. No, he just wanted to... Look, he just wanted to prove he could hit an Olmagus. It was to establish dominance, and in a bar fight, that's the most important thing you can do. I suppose. Oof. Well, killing your opponents would probably be a little bit better. Oh my, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. This poor butcher, he has not had a chance to do anything, really. Yeah, he's gonna have a, a rough go of it. Yeah, he's just been exploding. Sleep on the tree. Well, the tree looks pretty good over there. Stasis sword is guarded. Hod going for more ice, I imagine. And a summon to follow it. This behemoth has to pick which one he wants to interrupt. I'd say it's a good pick. Considering the Flare 2 is coming behind it to uh, annihilate the summoner herself for 660. I'd say that was a real good choice. Yep. Down to the tree and the behemoth again. Who is going for the life break. This could end it. It's a miss. Behemoth is Stasis down. Stasis takes him down. It is a sleeping tree in Thor. Unless Hell gets back up, which she does indeed. And she picks up uh, the wizard. So, this is looking uh, not too good for the tree, who's still taking a nap. And it gets worse. And, uh, this haste two coming probably is making it worse even. Come on, Priest, this is the perfect time to, uh... Actually, no, it was the, uh, summoner that had Flare two. Oh, and don't act it as soon as it wakes up. Just before it yeah. woke up. Just absolute yeah, bullying. This was just rude. And there's the Petrify. They're going to keep that tree in the corner. It goes to Adorably 2-0. Revenge for the last match. I'm excited to see how Butchers does down the loser's bracket, though, because I think that's a really solid team. So does Ara, because he keeps submitting it. Omega-1 versus Fig-1, Team Lean Beef, all caps, all E's, versus Go for the Eyes, boo. I mean, when you got some beefy tanky boys, going for the eyes is the plan. It's a good one. For Omega, we have Brisket the Lancer with Punch Art, MP Switch, and Martial Arts. With an E2 for the defenses. Chuck the Samurai with basic skill Hamido and attack up. Flank the Squire with throw HP restore and defense up. 
and Sirloin, the Archer, with Item, Weapon Guard, Throw Item. And of course, an E2 and a Knight Killer for the Crossbow option. On the other side, for Fig, we have Ajantis the Knight with White Magic Barrier and half of MP. Imoen the Squire with Planar Magic, Absorb Used MP, and Short Charge. Minsk the Samurai with Punch Art, Weapon Guard, and Dead Shot. That two-handed Muramasa and those red shoes paired with that Dead Shot is going to be a very vicious samurai. And Jahara the Geomancer with White Magic, Counter Flood, and Magic Attack Up, along with the 108 gems to strengthen most of them. That Geo's going to hurt and be a pain to take down. That's going to be a counter flood machine. Probably, yeah. Especially considering she's probably going to get mid-charged pretty often. And uh, just react with counter flood and nuke someone. But Team Beef probably has the beef to actually take one or two of them. Team Beef starting at the altar of beef. Double haste. Really solid start. Let's go for the eyes, comes in. Here comes the counter flood. 120. Do the defend. Mocking strike. Thought that this was team beef, not team chicken. And we see a jump for 189. A solid hit, followed by another 100. Not quite enough to put that berserking samurai down, though. And failing to take him down means, well... He is free to wreak havoc. Never mind. There we go. They got him down. Just barely Just took three at that. Of them to do it. I think he made an argument for his uh, team submission. He did. That he could join Team Beef. Here comes the full life on the uh, Squire. Done. Well, cooked him. Archer trying to put that Samurai right back down, but I'm pretty sure he's going to get a turn. Unless that Archer double turns him, but misses! This Lancer's not long for this world if that Samurai gets a swing at her. He doesn't. <laughs> but he is nope. tanking for his whole team. While this knight just casts full life on the undead. But misses. Wait, did she wake up from that? Huh. Curious why she... Maybe it was just the CT timing? That was very odd. Could be anything. Turns out we learned a whole new interaction where if uh, Full Life misses a sleeping undead, it just counts as damage and wakes them up anyways. Mocking Strike. Oh, and lands! That's pretty devastating. Because since that samurai is indeed wielding a katana, his bravery plays a factor. Jumps out of the Full Life! and lands on the Samurai, who, at least he got a swing. A full life now on the Samurai. That Squire should be up here in a moment, though. Heartache Strike, and we see a Charm. That is... That's gonna be bad. Uh, ne well, never mind. It didn't matter. <laughs> here 
Here comes the counter flood and a petrify. That's one way to deal with the undead. Squire fails to get up. This is not the time to be taking a dirt nap. Another heartache strike lands slow this time. Hellcry Punch gets guarded. Chuck moves in to put down the Geo using target. Squire finally wakes up. And he gets the hell out of there. Ooh, 336 on the Team Beef Samurai, but he was beefy enough. But the follow-up shot takes him out. Not beefy enough. Team Beef just cannot keep them down. Stunning Strike misses on a 93! Oh! <laughs> 93 is not 100, as they say. Sir Loin should have went for the loins there. Here comes the Counter Flood, and down goes the Squire. Things are not looking good for the beef currently. As Go for the Eyes has weathered the storm, and uh, they're currently going to go for the Sirloin's Eyes. Mm. 34 is not impressive, though. Heartache missing. Heartache Strike could turn this. All he needs is a good charm. If this sleep lands, though, that's going to be a Berserk Samurai. Yep. Done. Says hello and puts him down. Oof. Game one goes to the eyes. Let's see if Team Beef can bring their own beef to this fight, or if they'll be cooked. Delicious. Yeah, I will have to admit, Omega, that's a great point out. Big's team has a lot of reses on it, and that really doesn't play nice for your undead units. Who uh, are moving up to get full life immediately. Here it comes. Oh no, it was a Hellcry Punch. And does get the break. Goodbye, weapon. That go, there goes her javelin, and one speed. Sleep on two, off. Oh. Captain Proc knocks back, but he does live. But then a carved model puts him down and wakes up the archer just before his turn. Another heartache strike, and gets a berserk. Second berserker. Not a lot of damage. Berserker with a crossbow. I mean, you know, pull the trigger harder. Oof. Unless this Lancer gets woke up, uh, I think she's going to get nailed. Suna coming out. Cures the Berserk. Cure cures the damage. Uh, things are not looking good. Phoenix down to get up the samurai for Team Beef. Who is going to get shot and put down. Stick an arrow at him and he's done. Defy pain so he gets a good chunk of his health back. They are buying time for that squire to get up, who does get up immediately. Let's see if he can make something happen. Shirking it for 117 to put himself right back down. That was probably the worst person you could have hit. Oh, devastating crit. MP switch. Then MP switch is the... 
Ooh, the Lancer's still up, but is gonna have to tank one more, and she can't. She'll be down for three. Stasis Sword gets the Samurai down, but we don't see a stop prop. Heartache Strike. Yeah, it doesn't land. Can't really afford to be wasting time like that. Yeah, no, I think that's going to be their downfall. This archer just really likes that squire. The archer could get a heartache on the Geo. That would be pretty huge, but... He's not even going for it. Gets it on the Squire, but it's confusion. Let's see how this plays out. She wishes he would have done something better with his turn, too. <laughs> A little early on the wish. There's the thought that counts. It was less confusion, more premonition. Mind ruin just to be rude. Oh, the Squire is up! And here, the squire goes back down, the squire goes back down. Classic. Ooh, that was a big guard there. Indeed. Cheer up on the Geomancer. Oh, never, never mind, Hamido. Hamido is very good against those aggressive uh, Red Shoes units. Seen a full life get charged. 70 damage on the samurai, but that's not gonna be enough. He's gonna come in and he's gonna punch everything. He's gonna use those big meaty claws. Hamido, the big meaty claws! Oof. Another? Another! Unfortunately, the but does third not get time is the charm. Or fourth, or whatever. Either way... It might have actually probably was third. Uh... Going for the eyes worked out. 2-0 for Fig, right? They... Correct. Up next, Patty 2 versus Cafe. The, the team that worked together split... For Night of the Living Dead versus There Be Monsters Ahead Filipino Edition. For Night of the Living Dead, we have Barbara the Knight with Toxco Counter Flood and Guts. George Romero the Knight with Punch Art, Hamido, and Deadshot, along with a Ragnarok. Frank West the Knight with Basic skill weapon guard and defense up with that parrying sword. And Spiffo the Sage with summon magic, absorb used MP, and equip armor. <sighs> for, here there be, for There Be Monsters ahead, we have Whack Whack the Chocobo with Choco Guard, Ekek the Cockatorus, Aswang the Master Tonberry, and Tianak the Monk with Steel, Auto Potion, and Equip Armor. Out of curiosity, yeah. can weapon procs happen out of Hamido? Uh, I do not believe so. Okay, because I was curious if that uh, dead proc on Ragnarok could happen or no from a Hamido hit. You know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm pretty sure Hamido is treated like a normal sword swing, so yeah, I think actually it can. I think we saw it where oh, a Hamido with a spear procced the dragon breath. I think that happened last month. I'd have to go through the tape. Well, if that's a possibility, that is a dangerous night between Deadshot, Hamido, and that Ragnarok swing. C 
seeing the sage immediately go for a spell. Not sure what it is. Zombie confused and spare all up. And... Well, it misses. And we see a petrify. Critically, that was on that Ragnarok Knight. Bird is slowed. There goes the Tailwind. And the heal cancels the Petrify right out. Tomberry's kind of left all in the back. Probably going to be a couple of turns before he can join his team on the front line. Choco Cure for the double damage on the enemy team. Takes a solid hit for its trouble, though. Here comes the Petrify. And it lands with a 45%. That stage is probably going to be Petrified for quite a little bit, because... Don't know if Frank West can get over there. Does get a break, though, on on the uh, monk. I think that was the bag that got broken, because I think that's the only weapons yeah, that... that uh, cry. So those are the only weapons monks can have. Yep, and so that's minus one speed for her. But that does open her up to uh, use that 65 Brave to bust some heads. Chocobo manages to down one of them. Speaking of busting heads, there it is. Master Tonberry slowly finding his way to the fight. If it doesn't end before he gets there. Revived for 72. Not an interaction I think I've seen before, honestly. And a petrify. Yeah, Tonberry just... Good job, guys. He was there to make the dinner after. <laughs> well... Monsters take game one. We go to small map 25 for game two. I think small map will probably favor the undead knights a little more. Because they'll be able to get in a little faster. On the other hand, that Not Master that. Tonberry is going to be absolutely brutal on a smaller map. Indeed, he is going to get in there and shadow stitch someone immediately. Chopo rushes in to uh, offer itself for feed. Cockatorch moves up to be like, yeah, you're not alone, and petrify one of the knights immediately. 60% is not I'm a sure. trivial uh, petrify hit chance. No, it's not, but that's going to get undead, and that knight is going to get a turn due to the way the timing lined up. Sage moves up to die. Chef's knife with the death rock. <laughs> That was a that was a wild decision there, but Octor says I'm just gonna go up here for now. Chokebo moving back to put up the guard. They're gonna be real tough to take down now, and that Octorus is gonna. Oh wait, nope, does not get knocked off the top. That would have been some karmic justice. See a break, but an auto potion that. Wait, that monk has auto potion? That's unfortunate. Wind strike. Oh, put the knight critical. I imagine we're going to see a chunk of gear to take him down. Spin Fist hits her own teammate, but doesn't care. Gets him hit again and then gets stopped for her troubles. This is looking bad. 
That's Chomberry going to try and even up the odds a little bit. It is now one night against the world, though. The question is, can she buy enough time for her teammates to get up? Speed Ruin is a start Slow on that plan. Help. She needs to dodge this Petrify. 40%. Nope. Oh, I did not even see that other knight up. Oh, that's right. He stopped. And now he's down. And there it is. The monsters Night take it 2-0. Night of the Living Dead put back into the dirt, going down to the loser's bracket. Last match of the night, Simon 1 versus Kajada. Basarissian versus Tinfoil Hat Time. Eleni the Black Goblin featuring the upgraded revive. Gabby the Engineer with basic skill, Dragon Spirit, and Deadshot. Medeus the Chemist with Black Magic, Auto Potion, and Short Charge. And Neblina the Geomancer with Punch Art, Counter Flood, and Overflow. On the other side for Tinfoil Hat, we have Q the Geomancer with Punch Art, Counter Flood, and Martial Arts. Moon Landing the Red Chocobo with Choco Meteor. Flat Earth the Archer. I guess that'll probably help those long range bow shots. Snipe MP Switch and Two Swords for the Double Arbalist. And Grassy Knoll the Thief with Basic Skill, Weapon Guard, and Equip Bows. Thief that can't miss with a Windswept Bow with Strength Procs and Red Shoes. Large 87 for these yeah, two. That, that thief is going to hurt for sure. Yeah, definitely wouldn't want to be terrain in this matchup. It's okay. He knocks down all the trees so that Flat Earth can land the double hits. Synergy. Found it. I'll be honest, I'm really excited to see if this Black Goblin, how he performs with the upgrade or five. I think the Black Goblins are a bit of a better spot than they were before. Immediate 209 crit. Yeah, Black Goblins are definitely in that a was... better spot. I'm just not sure if it's a good enough spot. Yeah, that's kind of a problematic spot they're in currently. They do so many things that you just kind of have to uh, be wor worried about. Uh... Speaking of so many things, that's a frog. Dead frog. And a chocobo lands the moon on them. Frogs on the moon confirmed. And an immediate revive, which does remove the... Does actually remove the frog. Goblins do indeed still dance res, as we just saw. 400! Ouch. Well, we know what this goblin's job is in this fight. To pick up the bodies of his entire team. He says, fuck that, I want to hit something. And he gets hit with the moon for his troubles. Tinfoil hat time takes the first round as we go into round two. Let's see if uh, Simmons' team can take it back. Small 65. Bad omen, because Kajada usually does very well on small maps. Uh, Fig, I'm not sure. I don't think I saw Headshot hit two units. I could be wrong, though. 
It's actually possible for it to do so with two Arbalists. I guess if the, uh, well, there goes the chemist. I guess if the, if flat earth is targeted behind a unit. Yep, you can definitely do that. The AI does know how to do it. Okay, well, there you go. Headshot and a damage for 36. Gets counterflooded for troubles. No petrify, though. Things are, uh, looking pretty solid for the tinfoil, tinfoil hat club here. Turn punch to activate boost audio's re-raise. Good job, Goblin. That's synergy. It only took two-thirds of his health, but he did go and put down that thief. Carve model coming out and does get the petrified. Things are swinging back. I do love the back and forth. Goblin is trapped in the corner now. So he gets up and defies pain. Goblin gets chakra, so he's allowed to at least walk out, but I uh, don't think he's going to get a chance to. And here comes the moon. And there goes the goblin. <laughs> Double head break. Misses the first, but gets the second. But does proc a re-raise. Those Defy Pains will now take him to full health. Picks up the Goblin. Does not heal the Goblin. Goes for a carved model. Probably the right call, as this joke was just going to put him down anyway. Yep. If there's one thing the AI it's good at, it's deferring the kill to the latest possible teammate. Well, there goes the headshot. Wow, just landed it immediately. MP switch. Sonio comes out to take a shot himself, but uh, hits the MP barrier right there. That re-raise isn't going to save you, though, friend. And double don't acted just to be rude. Speaking of playing with their food. And Choco Asuna just to make sure. Trick's Feather to rip off the re-race. You don't need that. You don't need any of that. Carve model to end the match. Tinfoil Hat takes it 2-0. Goblin tried, to be fair, but, uh... That just went south real fast. It does. Anyways, thank you all for participating and coming out to watch, as always. Big thanks for Soul for uh, coming and helping out with commentary. Happy to be here. And, uh, God, I'm exhausted. I'm going to go to sleep. I will see you guys you tomorrow. Well. Have a good one, everyone.